Hey guys, Andre here from PSD Box. Welcome to a new Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make this uh, cool manipulation in Photoshop. We're going to use uh, three or four stock images. Um, they are free on the website. On my website on psdbox.com you'll find the links to download these images and you'll find the link on the video description and also on the annotation that uh, pops up on the video if you're watching it from the web. And it's not a very difficult one. I'm going to go a bit quick. I don't want to make it too uh, long. And uh, it's for intermediate level uh, users, uh, for intermediate Photoshop users. I'm using Photoshop CC 2017, but you can use any Photoshop version, any Photoshop, any CS version. So uh, we're going to start with this image. I'm going to open it on a new document because it's a smart object. And this is the original image that I started working with. I'm going to select it and I'm going to copy merge it and I'm going to create a new canvas. So uh, if you download this image, just um, just open it in Photoshop and you can start from, from there. Uh, this is my original image. So the first thing we want to do is remove the original uh, the original background of it. Uh, you can do it with the quick selection tool, I think. Let's uh, not with the magic one. Make sure you check the contiguous option. I'm having the sample size to 3x3 three three average, and I'm going to probably increase the tolerance a bit. And you can click there and then press and hold the shift key and select the rest of the windows there. For the ones here, we're going to use the quick selection tool because I think it will work better. Again, we press and hold the shift key and select the windows. You can see how easy it is to do it. Okay, our window is now masked. Um, after we add the other background, we can uh, refine the mask here if needed. I'm going to open my background. This is the background that I used for this, I'm going to close it. You can use whatever background you want. I just liked how it looked. The col well, the colors matched, something like that. I'm probably uh, I'm going to blur it. You can use Gaussian blur. I'm going to use the fill blur because it's a bit more realistic. And I'm going to add, let's say, about five pixels of blur uh, just to uh, remove the details and uh, keep the focus inside the room. Now add the couple over here. Uh, I already have them extracted from the background because I don't want to spend time doing that. This is the PSB file. So you can see how it looks like. Take a look at the hair. Um, I left, well, I, I cut most of it because I painted uh, it back after that and I uh, used the pen tool to remove the background. I will add a color lookup clipped to it. And I'm going to use the edgy amber, which comes with this adjustment by default. And I will change the blend mode of this to linear dodge. And you can see how bright it looks like. And I'm going to drop the opacity to uh, 50%. This is just to add more light because I wanted to create a sunny, um, a sunny scene here. Now here on the room, I want to create some light effects. I'm going to double click on the layer and add some inner shadow. And uh, with this inner shadow, I have um, changed the blend mode to linear dodge add. And I have to zoom it at 100% so I can see it better. I'm looking at this areas over here. Uh, so here I will change the angle to 130 degrees, distance one, choke zero and size one. And now just uh, opacity, let's leave it at 70. 8% and try colors, um, color tones like this, for example, and take a look at this, how it looks like now. See that before and after. It looks like the sun is coming from the outside. Now this has um, a side effect, which is uh, it adds this uh, effect also on the borders of the image. I'm going to show you how to fix that. Um, you can right click on the effects layer and choose create layer and that what it does is just creates a, a layer with the effect and now we can use a layer mask on that effect layer and just mask it out like that because we don't want it there on the edges and we're done it's as simple as that 
Okay, let's move on and let's take care of our couple. This is probably the most challenging part of this uh, manipulation. Uh, integrating them on the scene. Let's name a, a rename this to couple. And we're going to start with some um, layer styles. Well, actually, let's use layers. Um, we're going to add a, a solid color adjustment first, clipped to the couple layer. And we're going to use the color. I'm going to give it a code. It's 654F38. And I'm going to change the alignment of this to multiply and drop the opacity to 35%. Now, the reason why I'm using this color is because uh, the overall color of the scene, I want this warm tones. That's why I use this brown tone. And I want to darken them because you can see they're uh, sitting there in the dark. Part of the light is hitting them, but I didn't want to uh, complicate things. So I, I, assume, I assume they are in, in the shadow area. So I created this um, color fill, and now I'm going to create a uh, levels layer. And I'm going to clip them, of course. And the settings that I have for this are 0 0.77 for the midtones and 232 for the highlights. See how it makes them even darker? Great. Now, the next thing, another adjustment, a gradient map also clipped to the couple layer and here I use the photographic toning and this comes with uh, Photoshop C CS6 I think and above and I think I uh, used the um, sepia selenium 3 let's see if I can find it sepia selenium 3 this brownish tone and I set the blend mode to soft light and I dropped the opacity to 40% and you can see how now they look, they are darker, but they we still have the contrast. Um, try to match the contrast of the room. Um, you can see here on the, where the shadow hits, we have the shadows and lights. Try to match the contrast more or less. Next, let's add some layer styles for the couples. I'm gonna double click on them. And the first thing I wanna do is add inner shadow. This will create the light that we replicated here on the window. Um, I'm gonna leave the color dodge blend mode and I'm gonna increase the distance and also the size I'm just looking here at this part of the edges there and also the man's well the, those parts over there oops I don't want to have too much distance okay probably use another tone even though that one looks quite nice and I'm going to leave it like that and click OK. And now I don't want that effect to be visible on all parts of the body. So I'm going to do the same that I did on the window there. I'm going to right click on the effects layer. Well, actually, let's add another effect, which is an outer glow. I'm going to use a big, out, big and soft outer glow. And I don't know what blend mode should I use for this. Let's see. Uh, click OK and move this right over there. The outer glow probably use a overlay blend mode and use a much brighter tone. It's not really what I like. Screen looks ni nice, but I want a darker tone. Just a touch of glow there. And I'm gonna click OK. And now, as I said, I'm gonna right click on the effects layer, uh, on the effects icon and choose create layers. What this does is it moves the the effects on their own layers uh, and if I have clipping masks above it it's gonna clip it to to my layer and you can see that the outer glow is on its own uh, on its own layer below so I'm gonna create a layer mask for it first mm -hmm. and with the brush with an opacity of 50 and flow 50 as well I'm gonna remove the glow from here from the from this side I'm just I just need this glow on this part over here, not on the bottom because here I have to create some shadows for the couple, so I don't need that glow over there. Great, now let's move on the inner shadow, couple's inner shadow. I'm going to create the layer mask for this as well, and I'm going to remove the glow from right here, from the woman's feet, also from over there. I'm still using a 50, 50 for the flow and 
opacity of the brush and this one looks okay I still need even something a bit um, stronger for the woman's hand because this hand is facing the window so I need something a bit stronger so I'm gonna paint it myself let's see if it looks nice yeah something like that I'm using opacity 30 and flow 30 for the brush and a soft brush we're good to go let's create some shadow for the couple for some shadows I'm gonna select the outer glow and on top of it just right under the couples layer I'm gonna create a new one and I'm gonna name it shadow and with the opacity and the flow 30 I think it's that's okay I'm gonna zoom in actually okay now another shadow that we need is on on the couple's body itself so I will create a new layer above the cap the couple inner shadow and below the color fill that I created earlier I'm gonna name it body shadow and I'm gonna use actually a brown tone I'm gonna sample it from here something not too saturated I'm gonna try some blend modes maybe soft light could work and with this same opacity of 30 and flow 10% I'm gonna paint over the woman's body uh, what I want to do is this part of the body is facing the inside of the room which is supposed to be darker than the other one that's why I created this rim lights over here and probably the flow tends to low so I'm gonna edit increase it to 30 okay you could try other blend modes like for example multiply probably is going to be too dark or color burn uh, but you have to choose the blend mode before you start doing it because otherwise you can see it's not going to work and each blend mode works differently so keep that in mind i'm going to move on now and create a new layer on top of everything and i'm going to name it shadows general shadows and I'm gonna set this to soft light because it's gonna darken things and I'm gonna use a big soft brush like this opacity 50 and flow 30 it's okay it's going to affect the darkest area the midtones only Hi the brightest highlights are not going to be affected you can create another one if you want and use another blend mode like multiply which will affect everything a bit more but uh, I think it's going to look just fine just with one layer next let's um, work on the couple's hair this is going to take some work so I'm going to do it a bit quick I'm going to create a new layer below the couple above the shadows uh, oops alt oh sorry um, control click on the layer to create it below the layer that you have selected and I'm gonna name it hair like that you can use even a one pixel brush a uh, hard brush like this uh, first we ha you have to paint some bigger um, like maybe two pixels um, hairs and just sample from there and create something like that and you don't forget to create the highlights because the light is hitting the hair that's why it's a bit more tricky so as you can see first I'm creating the, f the biggest uh, hairs and I wanna well, still, I have the transfer activated and for the highlights you use um, brighter tones of yellow because the sun is hitting her hair so um, you have to use uh, different tones of, of color that's why I said it's a bit trickier uh, until you get some practice I'm gonna keep painting here and when I'm done I'm, well I'm gonna fast, fast forward and we'll continue when I'm done I'm gonna keep creating this um, um, highlights here I'm gonna do it fast so we'll see you when I'm done Okay, so I'm done with the hair. I uh, did it really quick. The 
man's hair I don't like it that much but anyways I'm gonna leave it like that um, as I said it's just a matter of combining color tones and um, taking your time but I think it looks better than this and uh, when you're making it smaller and maybe apply some filters it's gonna look different uh, and I made it really quick so uh, let's move on and start adding some light effects to this the first thing I want to add is some light uh, light glows. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name it Light Glows 1. And I'm going to change the blend mode to screen. And I will use a big soft brush. Well, not, not a big one. Let's say about that big. And opacity and flow 100%. But here we have to use the right tones of color. And I'm going to use a dark tone like that and start adding some glows of light over here and there because I have the pen pressure on I can control the amount of light that I'm adding here I want a really small glow of light like so over there probably a bigger one over here and now I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna name it light glows 2 and I'm gonna change the blend mode to color dodge and here we have to use really dark tones because this is going to uh, intensify the lights a lot more. I will use an, an orangey tone like that and use something really dark. Let's see if that's enough. Yeah, something like that. Maybe even just a bit darker like that. And click again on the places where you want to intensify the light. Maybe it's too orangey. So I'm going to go back towards yellow and just click here and there to add more lights and i think we're good to go let's move on and let's add some texture to create to uh, add some um, depth to this i used two texture this is from uh, bass pixel I, it's a free pack i'm gonna give you the link to it um, so you can download it i cannot include it on the resources but uh, you find it You'll find the link on my website so I'm gonna um, paste it on top of everything and I'm gonna change the blind mode to screen now um, I have to make it smaller because it's too big if you like it you can leave it like that but uh, I'm gonna make it a bit smaller I think I'm gonna leave it right over there check the edges because uh, sometimes you can see uh, the edges of the file so you don't want to do that and now I want to give a color to this so I'm going to use the hue saturation and I'm going to choose the colorize option because the background is pure white the only thing that is going to be modified is the, the particles themselves so I'm going to create this orangey tone there if you want less particles you can use levels and increase the darkness uh, well the shadows sorry or the mid tones a bit and well, see how it looks like. Adds a bit of um, ambient particles there. It looks nice always. And well, one other thing that I want to do and I forgot is add some dirt on the windows. Like right now, they look very fake. It doesn't look like there's actually any glass there. So one thing that I did is I use I use the texture to add some dirt on the edges over there. And I'm gonna show how I did that. First, I'm gonna open a texture image, which is this one. I think I got this from uh, DeviantArt. I have a folder where I download all the images that I use from DeviantArt. So I don't know if it's still available, but just use a texture like this, a wall or something like that, whatever you have. It doesn't have to be this one. I'm saying this because I, I don't know if it's still available. I have it on my computer, so I'm gonna give you the link to it if it's still avail available. So I'm gonna paste this texture between the 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 background the room and the new background like that and I have to make it smaller first and probably rotated rotate this like so just make sure it covers the whole window like that and now I'm gonna use the layer mask of the room Okay, that's why I said I didn't want to apply it. So I'm going to control click it. This will select the whole thing and I have to invert it because you can see I also have selected the edge. So that means I have to invert it. So I'm gonna, going to select inverse. And now I will go to filter. 
uh, to select, sorry, modify, and I'm gonna choose, uh, let's see if it's expand or contract. I think it's expand. And uh, let's say about five or six pixel. Nope, it's the other command, it's contract, because now the selection, is, it's inverted. So modify, uh, contract. But, uh, right now I have selected the this part over here. If I contract it, I make each uh, square smaller. And I'm gonna make it smaller by six pixels. Click OK, and now I have to uh, feather this. I'm gonna go to, actually, well, yeah, let's feather it. Um, or no, let's not feather it. Let's apply this layer mask to our texture layer. So I'm gonna select it and click the layer mask icon. And now I have to invert it. And you can see that now I just have the texture here around the edges, which is what I want. But the edges are too strong. So for that, um, that's why I wanted to feather the selection. But there's another way of doing it non-destructively, um, which is double clicking on the layer mask. And this should open the density and feather option. If you don't have this in Photoshop uh, CC 2017, you have to go to the preferences, I think on the interface, on tools. Uh, here there's an option that says double clicking, um, double click layer mask launcher select and mask workspace. Uh, I had um, somebody having problems with this. Um, uh, when you migrate from two th from Photoshop CC 2015 to 2017, it asks you what you want to do if you double click on the layer mask. Uh, make sure you have this unchecked if you don't see this. And when you double click, you should open this. And if you choose feather, you're going to feather uh, the selection like that. And you can see how this looks like now that the edges of the windows are dirty. And all you need to do now is use blend modes. So let's say maybe soft light. No, soft light is not going to work. Linear light. And it's not working. Hard light uh, is not really nice. I used, um, I contracted too much. Maybe with just four pixels, it's okay. Uh, but uh, when, you've, uh, when you contract the selection, let's see other blend modes. Uh, color burn or linear burn. Yeah, that looks nice. Maybe it's a bit too dark, but... Um, I'm gonna drop the opacity a bit. And I don't know, just try different blend modes and see which one work. uh, works better for you. Pin light is not gonna work. Um, I don't know, I think, I, I think I'm gonna uh, stick with uh, linear burn. But uh, this texture is wide, you can invert it and try different blend modes. But I think it looks better than without this. See, it looks like now the windows are a bit dirty. Uh, the edges of the window, uh, which is what I wanted. Um, and that's it. Let's make the final adjustments. I'm going to add a color lookup on top of everything. And let's see which adjustment I could use. I have the DK79, which is uh, an adjustment that I like because it gives the shadows a green tone, which is what I like. But uh, for this one, I think I'm going to use another one. Let's see. Edgy Amber is nice because it gives this yellowish tone and I could choose probably the hue and drop the opacity to about 30% or yeah, something like that. And now I want to add, well, I'm going to stamp everything on a new layer with Shift Alt Command E and I'm going to use the I'm gonna use the ref a camera raw filter. I already have tutorial on the previous tutorials. I explained how to use this if you don't have Photoshop CC. How to apply the camera raw filter because it's not available in previous versions of Photoshop, like Photoshop CS6, for example. And here I want to increase maybe the temperature. I have it like that. On the split tone, I really like how you can create this. Uh, I can create this with um, curves as well. Um, on the shadows, I want to have a green, a blue tone, and on the highlights, I want to have yellow tones. And what else? Well, just tweak the settings however you like. If you want more presence or less, you want to make them stand out a little, a little more or have them smoother. That's really up to you. 
uh, probably with a colder temperature and with the split tone effect I can create something over here something like that and on the effects I can create some vignetting effects and this is the before and after probably it's too cold so you could use um, curves um, the post-production is really up to you you can do whatever you like yeah, something like that could look nice. I also used the um, oil um, paint filter. I could stamp this again and go to filter, stylize and choose the oil paint. But on my computer is not working for some reason. I don't know why. I think it's a graphics uh, problem. My graphics uh, controller or something like that. And I, just, I always do this in Photoshop um, CS6. I also use the frequency separation for some areas, but for this uh, for this tutorial, I used I made this really quick. If you are a premium member, you can download the original PSD file, uh, file and see how I how I made this. But uh, I think uh, if you take your time, you can create a really nice manipulation. I also add, added some abstract lights over there. Let me show you the um, the original. See that um, it looks smoother because I used the oil paint filter and I brushed the skin a bit. Um, I also added some other light effects there uh, with using stock images, um, but you can create some really nice effects uh, without uh, using these filters. I also added some light effects over there, but um, I think the uh, this is looking pretty nice uh, as it is. You can probably let's say add a gradient map and use the one of the default ones, um, reset gradients. Probably this one could look nice if you put it on screen and just drop the opacity a bit. This will add more light on your image and it would look like this. So this is how I made this uh, manipulation. These are the basic steps. I hope you liked it and I hope I gave you a nice idea. I'm Andre from PSD Box and we'll see you on the next tutorial.